The NWSL playoffs are here. The best teams are on the biggest stage. And the, for the first time ever, the championship will air in prime time. But this is also happening against the backdrop of Sally Yates's report detailing systemic abuse throughout women's soccer and the ongoing NWSL and NWSL Players Association joint investigation. So as the focus shifts towards action steps to ensure both a safe and sustainable future for one of our brightest, brightest sports, we welcome in Washington Spirit Captain and NWSL P president Tori Huster. Tori, thanks so much for joining us. Yeah, thanks for having me. Well, let's just start with the excitement. We're seeing record numbers of fans in the stands. As I just said, the final will be in prime time for the first time. What do you think it is about this moment that is making women's soccer so captivating? I was so excited to see that we broke the record and then very quick, like hours later, we broke the record again. I think that just shows this sport is ready to take off. And I think women's soccer is one to watch and one to watch out for. I think we have amazing players in our league, super athletic players, super skilled players. You kind of, it runs the gamut and it's, you know, I'm injured this season, so it's been kind of fun to be a fan. I'm ready to get back out there, but um, I think this play, this next playoff game is just going to be amazing. Tori, this excitement comes at the same time as the sport is facing a reckoning. Within women's soccer, we knew some of what was wrong, but now we know just how widespread and extreme it all is. I'm angry and exhausted covering all of it, but you're, you all are forced to live it every day. How do we find purpose in all of this? Purpose is difficult. I think it is one of the things that as players, you know, we've we've learned we have to be more than players. We have to push our our sport forward as well as, you know, get rid of some of the um, the unfortunate things that are prevalent in women's sports, not even just women's soccer. Um, I think there were some very important findings from the Yates report. Um, including that the NWSL implement some of the recommendations from, or all of the recommendations from our joint investigation. So um, that needs to be seen through. And I think that report, that final report will have a lot to say about the way forward for us. Tori, I think to that point, the piece of this that is so moving to me is how all of these women collectively took ownership of their league, forced change. When we think about moving forward, how do we make sure that there's never again a normalization of such mistreatment, that sort of this feeling continues? Typically, when you see something like this, it does take the courage of the first few to come out and speak about what has happened to them. I think we saw that with the handful of players that spoke out against what had happened to them personally. And then I think having the joint investigation is proof that we are key stakeholders in our league and we don't gain, gain the ground that we have now without our solidarity and without our solidarity as a players association and a labor union. One of those players who's been so key in showing that solidarity and being a leader, of course, is Alex Morgan, but she's also an MVP candidate. What is it about her play? What makes her so special on the field? Yes, yeah, she is an MVP nominee and one of the ones that I nominated myself. I think I had five out of five, to be honest with you. But, you know, Alex is she's difficult to play against and she, she's scored a ton of penalty kicks. And people said what I think was maybe a third of her goals in the regular season were from penalties. It is not easy to score penalties and it's not easy to do it over and over again. She's tough to play against. And I don't think San Diego does as well as they do throughout the season without her. Tori, I'm trying to explain to all my coworkers today <laughs> about how close this race is. Like, I can't pick a winner. Um, I'm trying to decide, like, yeah, this might happen, this might happen, but who knows? You make a prediction for me because I was unable to. <laughs> oh, predictions are so difficult. Um, it's kind of, you know, you have the regular season and that's its own season. Then you have playoffs and that's its own season. Games are up for grabs in playoffs. I mean, last year we 
people would have probably counted us out, but we did not count ourselves out and we ended up winning. I think it really is anybody's game, but if I had to tap anyone, it would probably, it'd probably be Portland at this point. Oh, Sophia Smith, such a special <laughs> player. Such a special yes. player. Tori, if I can go back, before we let you go, if I can go back to something you said earlier, you were talking about all girls sports. So when I think of my lifetime, women's soccer has really moved the conversation so much. If women's soccer right now can teach all girls and their parents competing in any sport some lesson, what would that be? What do you hope is the takeaway? I think sports are a breeding ground for confidence. And I think something that sometimes our male counterparts have over us is that confidence, whether that's in the boardroom or it's on the pitch. Um, and I think growing up, sports really were able to give me the confidence. I, I just felt so free playing. And I think that carried over into other aspects of life too. So I'm very hopeful that young girls take whatever sport they're playing and they have the courage, they have, you know, they find their work ethic and they find that confidence to do whatever it is they end up doing for um, whether it's their career after sport or they play a musical instrument. I think having that confidence is super important. Tori, you guys are hosting the final. I will be there covering the final and I'm so excited. What events in DC are you most excited about as we lead up to the final? There is, there is so much happening. I think every single day I'm invited to a new event, which I believe is just because I am here at home in DC. Um, I'm super excited for the championship game, but there, um, there is a Title IX kind of conference happening the day before um, with some key, uh, I think, key female leaders in, in the women's sports space. So I'm excited to maybe have the opportunity to listen to them speak, you know, maybe introduce myself, that kind of stuff. The, um, the NWSL PA is putting on our um, annual championship event party for the second year in a row. So I'm excited to have some players from all over, uh, from all over the country come in and um, take part in that and, you know, just mix and mingle and have a good time, especially to celebrate the 10th year of the NWSL as well. Well, Tori, there's certainly kudos for that. And it sounds like a lot of fun times ahead, whoever it is that advances in the playoffs. Thank you so, so much for the time. We really appreciate it. And we are all, of course, looking forward to the playoffs. So on CBS Sports Network this Sunday, the semifinals start at 5 p.m. Eastern. The San Diego Wave take on the Portland Thorns, where our brilliant Jenny Chu will be, and then be followed by the second semifinal between the KC Current and OL Reign. Then, of course, Saturday, October 29th, as we've been talking about, you can all catch the NWSL Championship on CBS in primetime at 9 p.m. Eastern.